Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you are tuning in. Welcome to Homesteading and Gardening in the Suburbs. I'm Emma from Misfit Gardening and today we're talking about what to plant in summer for a fall harvest. I know, I know, summer has just got here. Um, we've actually just passed the summer solstice and now we're thinking of fall. I know, I know, I'm kind of making this summer fly by for the most of you. But actually, now's a really good time for us to start thinking about our fall garden making sure that we're starting seeds for those plants that are going to need some of that time to grow. So one of the first things that we're going to need to do is to figure out our first frost date and this is the time when we get our first frost in fall. So you can definitely just hop onto your favourite search engine and uh, take a look and see when your first frost date is and then just simply count the days from date that you are looking through to when that first frost date is. So for example, maybe it's 81 days from today until your first frost date. Now that you know that you have 81 days until your first frost date, you can start to take a look at what varieties can I possibly be planting right now that should be giving me a harvest by the time that that frost comes around. So we're looking for those days to maturity and we're looking for a smaller number of days to maturity. Okay, so there's lots of varieties that are ready in anywhere from 20 to 30 days. And of course, the more days to maturity that you have, the more varieties you have available to you. So let's dig in a little bit and find out what we can grow. So if you've only got 20 to 30 days to maturity, then you really want to be focusing on those plants that can tolerate a bit of frost and some cold weather. So we're talking about some cut and, cut and come again salads. Uh, and greens, so things like mescaline green mixes, red sales lettuce, braising greens, so things like collards, um, kales, chard, in particular the flamingo pink chard, that one grows very quickly. Um, and also those Asian or oriental greens, so plants like mitsuna, tatsoi, um, red giant mustard or giant red mustard those plants can handle a little bit of cold and you can harvest them when they're small so you can harvest baby leaves for a salad or you can let them get a little bit bigger and use them as kind of braising greens and stuff radishes are one of the quickest veggies that you can grow and varieties like cherry bell french breakfast white beauty and sparkler all grow very very quickly in the right conditions um, plants that are great for salads like especially fancy salads like arugula also known as rocket in the UK um, that grows very quickly so you can have a nice baby leaf arugula salad um, and also pea shoots so as peas get hotter with the temperature in the run up to the summer um, the production actually slows down and peas don't do very well in hot weather but if you time it right, um, as summer is coming to an end and you start sowing peas, then you can have another crop in the fall, which is great if you love peas and we really love peas. Um, but also um, in early spring, if you're growing peas, then you might have a lot of problems with birds. Well, in fall, when there's a lot more other things for birds to eat, if you're planting peas again, um, you might not have as many problems with birds eating them. So pea shoots are great in salad and uh, to cook with so it's um, one of those kind of weird things that people don't really eat so much um, over here but certainly in the UK pea shoots were quite popular all right if you've got a little bit more time so 30 to 40 days until your um, first frost date then you've got a few more things that you can be growing so of course you can grow everything that's going to be uh, ready in a shorter amount of time but then you could also be growing things like orish or mountain spinach which i love to grow it grows great in these uh, hot and temperamental conditions that i have here at altitude um, also plants different varieties of swiss chard so yellow bright lights five color silver bee and cardinal um, 
more salad greens jericho romaine lettuce is one of the quicker ones to grow if you like those kind of heading lettuces spinach bloomsdale long-standing and japanese oriental giants will grow within those kind of times again you might just be getting some baby leaves but if you're leaving them in the ground and you're going to cover them with frost protection then potentially you've got a source of uh, food growing throughout the winter that you can keep harvesting uh, you can be growing different types of beets as well um, one of the quickest ones is bull's blood and you can use that for both the leaves and the roots um, if you have 30 to 40 days before your next frost though you can definitely be growing a lot more of these cooler weather crops so things like tender green mustard pak choy um, baby shanghai is a good variety for those shorter days to maturity but also kales like white russian and uh, turnips like tokyo white are really good varieties um, if you've got a shorter amount of time now if you've got 40 to 50 days before your harvest then you might be able to squeeze in some more bush beans so you can um, get some more beans harvested and I, I love me some beans beans are probably one of my favorites to grow as are squashes um, but I, I really would only recommend growing extra beans if you know that you've got a variety that is going to be, um, you know, a heavy producer in a short amount of time. So Golden Wax Provider and French Garden are some good varieties and uh, they should be ready, especially if you get them in as soon as possible. Um, because the problem with beans, of course, is the minute that you get a little bit of frost, um, they're toast. They don't do well in cooler weather at all. Um, you can be definitely putting in more beets, so lots of different varieties, different colours start to become available the more time that you have. And the nice thing about beets is they can tolerate a little bit of colder temperatures, so they can tolerate some light frosts, but if you start getting um, prolonged and very cold uh, frosts coming in, then it's best to lift them and get them uh, out of the ground because they don't do very well and they um, get badly frost damaged. Same with um, chard as well. They can tolerate a little bit of frost, but if it starts getting too cold, then you're better off harvesting them and preserving them. Um, but if you've got 40 to 50 days, then you can start thinking about uh, broccoli, the CISO, spelled D-I then C-I-C-C-O might not be how um, I'm pronouncing it probably not actually I'm terrible at pronouncing um, but um, that's a great variety that grows in a short amount of time and it's an heirloom variety so if you're only wanting to grow heirlooms and not hybrids then that's a good one for you to try um, turnips purple top white globe that is one of the rock stars that i grow every year and uh, golden globes a, a good one it's pretty um it produces lovely yellow roots but purple top white globes probably our favorite and go to um more oriental or asian greens like tatsoi southern giant curled mustard become uh, able to be grown because they've got a little bit more time and uh, other varieties of spinach as well like verdil and catalina um, and also endive so tres fin that's a abysmal um attempt at doing a french accent for that um or tres fine um they Endives are pretty good for cooler weather and they taste better in cooler weather. Um, they can have quite a bitter taste to them um, if they're grown in like hot weather conditions, kind of like most of your brassica family, they also develop that bitter note to them. Um, for radishes, you can be sowing watermelon radish or daikon. And uh, greens, you could also squeeze in some champion collard greens if you have uh, 40 to 50 days to maturity. Now, if you have got 50 to 60 days before the frost is coming, uh, this opens you up to a whole, whole heap of other varieties. So, of course, you can grow anything that is going to be in a shorter amount of time. 
but you could also be growing different uh, pea varieties like the sugar, Oregon Sugar Pod, Progress Number 9, Sugar Snap, Kales, lots of different Kales become available to you to grow like Rip Bar, Scarlet, Siberian, Blue uh, Curled Scotch, um, Red Russian or Ragged Jack. You've got different um, brassicas that you can grow. So cauliflowers like Snowball or Red Swan, um, Beets, Golden Detroit, Detroit Cylindra Kyoja, uh, which is the one that looks a little bit like a candy cane. Um, those all do well in a, you know, rundown into fall. Um, but also the earlier that you can start those seeds and then start transplanting things outside into the garden, the best chance that you have. Now, some plants are going to do better at um being sown indoors and then transplanted out so things like cabbages like express red and greyhound um broccoli rapini um which is like a an oriental variety kohlrabi purple vienna or white vienna um and swiss chard like red ruby or fort hood giant those those plants will do really great if you sow them indoors and then once they get to be you know a couple of inches tall then planting them out um, that's going to be your best bet now carrots things like little finger or parisian and um, carrots generally don't like to be um, sown in seed trays and then transplanted out so you are much better to sow your carrots um, as space is being made available in the garden so for example I've just harvested um, garlic out of one of the garden beds so I could be sowing carrots in that space because it's going to take a couple of weeks for those carrots to even come up and carrots have got a notoriously long germination uh, period like up to three weeks before they'll start to germinate so there's some things that we can do to help speed that up so if you've got a piece of um, hessian or burlap if you wet that and then put that over where you've sown your um carrot seed that's going to help keep things damp in there and that's what needs to happen so carrots dry out quickly you need to keep that soil damp and um, obviously because you're sowing in summer you definitely need to make sure that you keep that burlap nice and moist you might need to water it twice a day um, to help make sure that that soil doesn't dry out and that's going to help your carrots um, come up really quickly um, you could also use the space that you're freeing up as you're pulling out things like garlic and stuff to start putting in transplants now i get it not everybody's got time to, or, or the space to start sowing more seeds and stuff in the house i'm pretty sure that um, if i grab my seed trays and i start filling them with soil and i start putting them back into where we start all our seeds again um, my husband might have a mild heart attack because <laughs> at the minute we're uh, working on a lot of house remodeling so there's not a lot of time or space available at the moment um but if there's transplants available and I just happen to be going to the uh, garden centre, um, then I would definitely be purchasing some transplants to be putting out into the garden because it saves a lot of time and they're quicker to get established. So don't be afraid of using transplants, especially if you know, you're know you wanting to get your garden started, but you feel like you've left it a bit late. Um, you can definitely be... Um, capitalizing on you know some of those transplants and stuff that are available in the store you could even still be putting in um you know some cucumber transplants and things like that that um should be harvest ready well before the frost comes in so take a look at some of those and you know at this time of year you can start getting you know a good deal on things like pepper plants and tomatoes that are growing in pots because they're going to be starting to be discounted as the season's coming to an end uh, if you grow them somewhere where you're getting a lot of sunshine and it's in a sheltered area um, you can grow keep growing them in a pot that's just fine and uh, for your peppers and things you know you might might be lucky in getting a little bit of a harvest 
And of course, one of the best ways for us to make sure that uh, we're going to be getting some success out of our garden is, you know, even if you've got a short sowing, uh, growing season, keep sowing things that are going to be continually harvested every couple of weeks. So things like radishes or carrots like keep sowing them every two weeks because that way you're going to be able to harvest some and then two weeks later some others are going to be ready and you're just going to keep that cycle going also make sure that you keep the planting area moist when sowing in summer so they don't so the seeds don't dry out or your transplants don't dry out if you've got a very hot summer consider using some shade cloth to reduce that amount of heat that's beating down on those young seedlings and of course make sure that you keep your garden fed um you know look for signs of plants that are looking a little bit stressed and maybe give them a little bit of a feed with an organic fertilizer um, or a side addition of some well rotted compost there's lots and lots and lots of you know organic certified products that are available and they're easily available online or in your uh, local big box store um, you don't have to resort to those chemical fertilizers that are organic ones available um, but as your plants are growing you definitely want to make sure that you're helping to maintain that soil fertility because that's going to really help your plants grow anyway i hope you enjoyed this episode this is a bit of a shorter one because i've got to get out there into the garden and do a little bit of weeding and also some harvesting because we've finally got some strawberries ready so until next time i hope your garden grows beautifully and i'll talk to you soon <music>